internet, my name is Catherine Barsnestis, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis. Uh, Munchies and Minis is a weekly cooking show where I first take, well, make a uh, Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop role-playing game themed snack, and then work on painting a miniature. Uh, today we're mostly just going to be doing some snacks because tomorrow's the 4th and apparently I'm having a party, so I'm going to be doing a bit of food prep uh, on that while we wait for the stuff that we're making to bake. But speaking of what we're making, um, I've been doing the 52 weeks of D&D &D fan art challenge, um, well, since I started streaming about in February. Um, last week, the theme word was injury, so we made some pasta of inflicts wounds. This week, uh, the theme word is loot, so we're going to be making something I call Hassleback Withholding. Uh, so we're going to be doing some Hassleback potatoes, stuffed with some good stuff like bacon, cheese, fresh herbs. As well as, um, if you remember my other, um, some of my other e episodes, we had the breakfast mat for Dungeon where I made honeyed cornflakes as part of loot piles. Um, and there was also the um, treasure chest MacGuffin muffins, also filled with honeyed cornflakes. We're going to have that as a little bit of a topping upon our ha uh, Hasselback potatoes later on. So, um, right, I should probably start making things. First, we need to be preheating our oven to about 425 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I also need to get out a baking sheet. And making a heck of a lot of noise while doing so. Just going to prep that with some foil real quick here. Somewhere in my kitchen. Where? I am not entirely sure. I'll be right back. Trying to find foil as things get moved around my kitchen. Open a new box, because I'm not sure where the other one went. It's probably hiding under things. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the second out of the third time I'm going to be cooking this week. Uh, last night, I did a bunch of pork skewers for my aunt being in town. Uh, she lives in Dubai, actually, so she's just going, I, I just want bacon, other kinds of pork and alcohol. So I was happy to oblige. But that also means I'm doing a heck of a lot of cooking this week um, because tonight we've got our Hasselbacks of Holding. And tomorrow is the 4th, and I decided to have a last-minute get-together shenanigans at my place. And I've been really wanting to use my smoker for a while, so I'm going to be attempting kind of a... What's it called? Ebenezer McCoy-inspired pork spare rib. Um, Ebenezer McCoy uh, from the Dresden Files. Um, so, yeah... Uh, that's actually going to be part of our stream tonight. I'm going to be doing a little bit of testing, creating a spice rub to put on those ribs, as well as a homemade barbecue sauce. So, that's part of the things to come. So next up, I need to take my potatoes. And I'm going to be using two chopsticks as a cutting guide. And the deal is, you want to be able to cut these potatoes so they're about eighth, in, eighth of an inch thick slices, but don't go any further down than a quarter of an inch to through the edge. So just going to, well, that didn't work. Right, apparently I need thick chopsticks. Well, this one is gonna be the test potato. No, I see what needs to be done. Slice off the bottom there. That way, I have an even surface. Well. Cooking is definitely a learning process. And we just learned that Sometimes you gotta mess up to make things work. So.
Okay. Well, there's one that we kind of messed up on, but that's okay. Just stick that back on there. And stick it onto our thing. Right, so let's see if I'm yep, definitely going to need to level that section too. So just going to slide off the bottom. We're going to do about six because that's about the size of a standard gaming party. Beautiful. Just trying to you know, switch over to the stove cam so you can see what I'm doing. Right now I'm just trying to line it up so I'm able to fit all of my potatoes onto one baking sheet. Because my oven is really not all of that, uh, all that um, wide. So okay, that looks like the more stable side. So cut ourselves a platform. Probably should have cut the other side.
two more to go. Okay. So we'll slice off the more on even side. Seems to be more uneven. Okay. So, I've got my potatoes, I need to melt a little butter, get rid of these. And so I'm going to need about, melt about three tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to melt that in, eh, I was going to actually melt it in a measuring cup right here. So, just I'm just going to melt 12 seconds on high at a time in the microwave. Whew. And it's great timing because my oven is now preheated. Just going to put the butter back in here to keep cold. Hi, Ginger. How are you? My little girl cat is scoping out my anti-fatigue mat again. Isn't that right, great girl? Yeah. yeah. This is Ginger.
Yep. Yeah, that's definitely melted because it's popping on me. Okay. All right, now that I've got that butter melted and all over the top of my microwave. Yeah, she's my little girl. She's about 20 years old. And, uh, like I said, she likes to hang out on my anti fatigue mat. So, I'm not gonna lie, she is right in front of my feet right now between the counter and my legs. So, oh, nope, now she moved. Good. Okay, so now I've got my melted butter. Just going to coat each potato with butter. kind of seep, seep in. But yeah, Ginger was actually the neighborhood cat in our last apartment. And uh, we kind of fell in love with her. We'd originally conspired to steal her away when we moved, but um, then her old owners moved and left her right before freeze. So at that point, I was on the phone with my husband going, uh, you want a cat? And it's like, Ginger? Yep. Yep, so we got our little baby princess that way. And we have two others that are kind of wandering around here, but they're... My husband's offering me my uh, Hasselback slicer that my dad bought me, but uh, I mean, considering that you probably don't want to buy a new gadget until you've actually tried a certain application first, um, I was just showing you the way to do it with stuff you probably already have. So yeah, sort of a tabla. I mean, that way you have a little wire grid. But uh, we're just going to go a little traditional this way. If, I mean, by traditional, I mean chopsticks. Even though I think Hasselback potatoes are really not all that traditional to begin with. I'm just using the application to be able to stuff as much tasty stuff inside of these things as possible. So, yeah, okay. I'm making sure that I get the whole potato, possibly even like into the little nooks and crannies if I can. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to pop that into the oven for about half an hour while we prep everything else. And also while I do a little bit of prep for my fourth party tomorrow. So. Okay. minutes. Okay. Mm. So, I'm just gonna grab a cutting board out here. Here, I'll go with blue. Blue's a little less of an offensive color to look at while streaming. Okay, so first, I'm gonna need my cheese. No, I mean, I've got some, like, New York extra sharp cheddar from Costco. I like the stuff, and we kind of need to work on getting rid of it. So, we're going to be doing about one, two, three, four, five, six slices. I was just going to slice that evenly, but... Mm. And I'm just going to quarter that. Stick that in a prep bowl for assembly later. While making sure to unstick the cheese. So 
So you'll end up with like little 20, uh, 24 little mini slices of cheese. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. So, got that. Next up, I'm gonna be putting together some fresh herbs. So I've got a ton of rosemary from Buford Highway Farmer's Market. So I'm gonna need about a quarter cup of that chopped. So first I'm just gonna strip the stalks like this. And just as a quick note, even though I didn't really go over it earlier, that to be able to do this without hurting yourself, it's best to hold a knife properly. As you can see, I'm pinching the, um, the blade like that, and I mean, it's not really going anywhere. As opposed to if I was doing this, it doesn't take much effort at all to move it. So that is your quick tip. You'll save yourself a lot of time and stress in the kitchen by just learning the basic knife, uh, knife technique. That's about an uh, eighth of a cup, so it looks like I'm going to need about uh, three stalks more. Just eyeballing it. One. And hold on to those uh, rosemary stalks because you can totally use them, uh, freeze them in a bag of other kitchen scraps and make homemade stock with it. So, yeah. Wrap that up. chopped. And here's another techni knife technique that is going to save you some time. So we're going to need a quarter cup of chopped sage. I'm going to show you the quickest way to do that. And the most even way of doing that. I'm 
might need all of the sage, so we'll see. And currently we've got about 24 minutes left on our potatoes, so we're making great time. So, yeah, as you see, gather pile as big as you can, and then start twisting the leaves together into a bundle. And yes, it does look a little bit like something else, another kind of bundle of herbs. Not that I would know from experience, but I might. I might not, but I might. Okay. All right, so now we got that bundle of herbs. Kind of twist it as tight as you possibly can. Okay, now we got that. We're just gonna uh, do a chiffonade cut, which means slicing into ribbons. So just kind of take the edge there and just slice. Making sure not to cut your fingers in the process. Okay, now that we've done our chiffonade, I'm just gonna move that to then chop it a little further. Make it less, more bits than strips. Let's see how much we got out of that. I mean, keep in mind, this doesn't have to be tightly packed. It just needs to be generally a quarter cup. So, looks like there's gonna be a little bit more. So. Let's see, how many more intact leaves do I have? Well, it doesn't have to be fully intact. That'll do. Besides, the remainder of this sage is going to go straight into my stock bag for homemade chicken stock later. I'm just going to combine that with the uh, rosemary stalks that I stripped earlier. Just have that ready to go to put my stock bag when I'm ready. And once again, like the same like I just did, I kind of gathered all those sage leaves together and then twist them into a bundle. tight as you can, and then slice it into ribbons. Turn it around and do a light chop with the remainder, so. And that is a quarter cup. Now I just need to get my thyme, which is going to be a little bit more annoying to do. But just need to strip these stalks until I get a quarter cup, which is going to take me a while, but that's okay because I've got 20 more minutes of waiting. Though I still need to slice my bacon, so, and measure out cornflakes, so. Grab a sprig and start stripping. Giggity. You know, I've got my sexy stripping music going on right now. Oh yeah, oh baby. <laughs> it's unprofessional to laugh at my own jokes, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I strip that time. You know it likes it. Not really. And I just chased another viewer away. Sorry, not sorry. Do, 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 do. 
like, I thought this was a family-friendly show. Well, I thought it was too. And then I got bored with myself. And started making really bad culinary dirty jokes. I mean, you've seen Ratatouille, right? Have you ever known an actual cooking staff or chef to be fully wholesome? Didn't think so. I wish I could say that I was a professional chef, but that requires going to culinary school, and culinary school is expensive. Not to mention, I think... The only one that doesn't require an internship would require me to go to New York. And New York's expensive. So. What I really should have done was freeze this ahead of time and then just shake out all the leaves. Because apparently that works. So yeah, totally worked out today, and uh, my shoulders and arms are definitely feeling it. That's okay. I mean, it wouldn't be working, it wouldn't work unless it hurt, right? So. Whew. I say as I make a giant cheese and bacon laden concoction. Positive role models. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is gonna take me a while. I'm tempted to change my recipe to only be an eighth of a cup. No, no, I stay committed. At least I'll try. Okay. Ah, oh, so this is why they call it time. It takes a lot of it. To actually use it. <laughs> Probably should have named it Patience. Today I learned that stripping time works your deltoids. Oh.
think I might include on the recipe card to uh, freeze the time ahead of time. Ah. For faster stripping. Giggity. Okay. back extension off the countertop to be honest with you. Oh boy. And that's a YouTube video series in itself, right? Card in the kitchen. And I will admit the other day after a, after a workout I was, um, I was cleaning the cat boxes and I'm going, you know, I'm really tempted to market a workout for cat owners. Cause squat, scoop, no, squeeze your glutes together to lift yourself back up again. And back down. Feel the burn. Smell the stink. Get it over with. Hug your cats. Shower first. But yeah, um, a busy week already. I mean, saying earlier that my uh, my aunt was visiting from Dubai. She uh, she teaches law and ethics out there at a university, and apparently they started watching Game of Thrones as of late. And uh, she's asked me to put together a video or podcast or something where I talk about the. Uh, about food in Game of Thrones and food history and all that, as well as culture. I told her I'd be happy to stream it at some point, and she's like, well, that would probably be about eight in the morning your time. I'm going, well, I could make it work. Stream, answer questions, cook up something. Preferably something they're actually able to eat over there. I'm thinking maybe the dragon eggs, the Daenerys' stuffed artichoke dragon eggs. Either that or I'm thinking maybe the Dornish recipes, or I could even figure out a Marini, a Marini's recipe. I think they have a little bit more access to the ingredients that George R. R. Martin, uh, Martin lists in Marine and Astapor. Oh boy. Oh. Yes. Kitchen workout. Stripping time. Leaning against the counter. Doing the same thing. Holding your arms out. And squeeze your shoulder blades together to make sure they still work. Oh boy. Most of my time was spent on this time. I hope I am not boring you guys. But um, back to Dubai, um, speaking of which, my aunts offered to have me come visit her probably sometime in January, um, which I'm really tempted to do. I'm also... I'm also tempted to see if I can stream from her kitchen while I'm there. I think that could be pretty fun. Of course, if she'll let me, I mean, I don't want to turn my trip to visit my aunt into just a work trip, but I'm also, I've heard the food out there is incredible. 
And I mean, considering that she's brought me back spices almost every time that she's come back to visit. Not this time, but that's, ugh, that's fine. I've got my own spice arsenal. I mean, heck, I could just pick up some Iranian saffron myself and bring it home with me. Even though I've, I don't really use it that much anymore, considering that not I know that not everyone has an easy source like I do. Otherwise, it gets stupid expensive. So, I mean, of course, mine just costs a trip to Dubai, which it's like, oh yeah, sure, trip to Dubai. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go. I think it'll be fun. And not to mention, if uh, if I go maybe during one of my holidays at the school I work at, so I'm not disrupting the flow of things too much, could be fun. So yeah, um, so tomorrow is the 4th, um, gonna have some good friends over from uh, the North by Northwest and Loot and Dagger podcasts, looking forward to seeing them, and uh, I'm gonna be making some smoked spare, uh, pork spare ribs, I think what I'm gonna do I don't know if you've ever seen the Dresden Files, but uh, Ebenezer McCoy is Scottish, but he's also been living in America since the colonial period, and living in southern Missouri at a place called Hog Hollow. And I'm thinking, well, part of what I want to do is write the official Dresden Files cookbook. I went to Chicago back in April to do some food research, and I kind of, kind of did sort of a sightseeing tour of every, like a lot of the places listed in the books, as well as trying the food and different beers to see if I could find stuff that sort of matched up with the spirit from the books. And I found a lot of things. I mean, I'm planning on posting later this week my first part of the my Dre- dining in Dresden, Chicago dining guide and dining and sightseeing guide, uh, where it's going to be called "In Search of Max," like a Mac and Alley's, um beer and steak sandwich. I'll be doing a redo of my steak sandwich recipe for that. And uh, but Ebenezer McCoy, what I want to do is kind of a almost kind of Kansas City style smoked barbecue ribs with some Scottish flavors incorporated. So we're gonna be putting together kind of a spice blend and a homemade barbecue sauce later in the stream to try to replicate that. This is all kind of food testing, um, recipe testing in this particular sense. So do bear with me as I figure that out. Um, Cause I want it to, like I, I told Jim when I first brought up the idea of doing a Dresden Files cookbook up to him that I was, I wanted to do something worthy of the series, where I'm not just like, oh, I'm a fan, I want to do, I want to do your cookbook, please hire me. No, I, I mean, I myself am a fan, but I love the folklore and the story so much that considering that every other franchise holding uh, well, sorry. Each of the licensed items from the Dresden Files, except for maybe the TV show, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, I know people like it, but I don't like it personally. But that's that's my that's my onus to bear. Um, okay, yeah, it's about a quarter cup. We'll use that. Um, 
all of it's been, for the most part, incredibly high quality. I mean, the role-playing game's been incredibly high quality. The, um, what's it called? Competitive card game, all the graphic novels. They've been fantastic with quality out the wazoo. I want to do the same, and I mean, when I first started I first started doing a Dresden Files recipes a couple of years ago, like the first year I started the blog. And the steak sandwich still remains my most viewed recipe uh, of my entire blog year after year. And while it's very good, after going to Chicago, I found something that I think fits Max a lot better. And so I'm going to be doing a redo on it. Um, but ribs, I figured that I'd probably have to do a couple of tests until I get it just right, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what we can do with that. Poor me, just been talking for a while. Okay, so there's my herbs, and now I just need to slice up my bacon. So here I've got about, oh goodness. Out of a third of a pound of bacon. So it's left over from when I made the pork skewers. For a, well, one of my other Munchies and Minis episodes, it was, the theme was orc, and I made bacon wrapped pork skewers. And uh, I'm just going to slice that into half to make it so it's an uh, inch and a half wide. Um, I'm just gonna stick that into a prep dish for when I'm ready to stuff everything. So yeah, uh, for the theme word orc, I made bacon wrap pork skewers with red onion and cherry. And that's what I made for my aunt when she came in yesterday. I did a double recipe and oh my gosh, it was so freaking good. Um, but it did take me all afternoon to thread all of those skewers. I think I ended up making about, oh God, 14 of them. Yep, 14. So, so yeah. All right, I need to wash my chef's knife here. I think that's the only other raw protein we're gonna do for the rest of the stream tonight, at least with a chef's knife. I'm gonna hold off putting the spice rub onto the spare ribs until tomorrow. Actually, I'm kinda tempted to stream some of the stuff tomorrow. I may or may not. Okay, well, um, sounds like 30 minutes is up on our potatoes. Perfect timing. So, yes, yes, we can hear you. All right. So, yeah. Pull that out of the oven. Okay. Here's hoping they're not overcooked. I admit this is the first time I've made Hasselback potatoes. So, oh, wow, it's heavy. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Right. These oven mitts are kind of useless. Noted. Okay. So yeah, um, these should be significantly softer, as you can see, and therefore much easier to stuff. So I'm just gonna carefully separate these layers with a butter knife. Well, kind of a small fillet knife, if you ask me, but it looks like a butter knife. Well, it's the size of a butter knife, so I'm just gonna 
separate those. are very hot potatoes, so you definitely want to be careful while separating. let the steam release from it too. All right, so now I guess it's just a bit of an assembly line, so a piece of bacon about uh, three folds in. four slices on that one. It's a little more fragile. Another three slices in. Try doing it from the other side because I can see I'm running out of bacon.
you just kind of stuff in the cheese wherever you can find a place for it. those herbs. Okay, cool. So, now that those are all stuffed, I just need to melt another three tablespoons of butter and paint it on those. So, just get that going. Whew. So, butter. Measuring cup, need about three more tablespoons. And just 
get that into the microwave for about 12 seconds at a time until fully melted. Kosher salt out. I need to season these suckers. See how I'm doing. Melt more. Um, right. So my thyme and rosemary away. but surely. Okay. Well, it's for the most part melted. Now I just need to paint that onto the potatoes and make sure it gets inside of all those little nooks and crannies. Of course, having that butter in there is also going to keep the potatoes nice and basted and fat. The fat. Okay, so that's all the butter. I'm just going to stick that in the sink and then season this liberally with kosher salt. ready to go back in the oven for another 30 minutes. So let's just do that. these herbs left over that's going to just going to straight into my stock bag it's a lot of chicken bones in right now because we've been doing a lot of chicken leg quarters for dinner so but yeah once that's all full up i'm going to put that in my crock pot with just fill it with water cook it on low for eight hours and then you'll get about 10 to 12 cups of homemade chicken stock. So, waste not, want not. Hi, Ginger. How are you? Right, so, while we are waiting for that to mix up, it is time I do a bit of testing in the kitchen. So, well, some other slicing, but you know what? Screw that. We're going to do a little bit of testing first. So, just need to make it a spice rub to go along with my ribs. So, if I'm thinking about what generally is in oh, a lot of Scottish food, we're looking at definitely sage. Definitely gonna do some ground sage. Uh, do I 
have any ground time. Let's see. Hmm. Well, I've got juniper berries. That might work out interesting, but I don't think it's generally used in Scottish cooking all that much. Let's see, that's full time. Let's see what ground time. I'm running out of room in my kitchen. Whew. Okay. So if I consult my spice arsenal here. That's nutmeg. Hmm. Ah, here's some ground thyme. So thyme and sage, definitely. Now, I don't know if he would use paprika as much. I mean, I know it's more of a it's pretty standard but for barbecue. But I'm wondering if he might actually, being as old as he is, he might go for more traditional spice blends. Ugh. Especially if they are based off, based off black pepper. Oh goodness, let's just do a little bit of research here. So, so I'm just gonna look up Google. Scotland, or Scot no, Scottish cuisine, spices. Let's see if we can work off of that. Oh, goodness. A lot of oatmeal, not gonna lie. Um, hmm. Let's see, Scottish at heart. Scottish food, not just haggis and shortbread, but I like haggis and shortbread. Oh, uh, let's see here. There are a lot of root vegetables, soft fruits. Okay, I need spices though. Um, the Vikings brought the Scandinavian methods of salting and smoking to Scotland, became popular. Okay, the Scots didn't traditionally eat much pork, but pigs are not aren't nearly as popular as cows and sheep. Now, uh, the reason why I'm still disregarding this and going with pork is, well, Missouri. Barbecue. Pork. So, night ginger. Let's see, oats and barley. Uh, you don't really want to put oats in a spice rub. That's, that's great, but what about spices? historical mention of a haggis-like dish appeared in the 15th century, but similar dishes may have well appeared as early as 9th century or before. Okay. There's a lot of salt and pepper and oats. Mm. Still not a fan. Spices left us somewhere. So I imagine garlic would still be pretty prevalent. So we're gonna definitely use some garlic powder. So definitely I've got Thyme, sage, and garlic powder as of now. I'm just gonna switch the tripod so you're not just looking at my prep. And let's see here. Cheese, lots of cheese, scotch whiskey. Well, I would like to use scotch whiskey. Um, let's see what fruit. Way I can figure. Blackberry. Let's see. Blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, apples, and rhubarbs. Okay. Hmm. Maybe if I just find a recipe for haggis, I can at least get. Yes, but what spices? I'm gonna look up a haggis, uh, haggis recipe. Let's 
see if we can get the spices listed off of that. Okay. Let's see, Alton Brown's recipe. What does he use? Dried ground herbs. That doesn't help me, Alton. What kind of herbs? Okay. Great British chefs. Maybe that'll work. Let's see. Pepper, nutmeg, coriander. Okay, so it looks like the main spice element we're going to get is black pepper. So let's use that. We also have some ground coriander seed. Let's see if I can get to it. Coriander. That is mustard powder, which we are going to need for barbecue sauce. Well, I might actually hold off on that. Do not eat caraway seeds. But coriander just happens to be underneath everything. Of course it is. That cinnamon, don't need it. Coriander. Coriander, garlic powder, sage, thyme, and nutmeg. Which, that's clove. How did that get in here? Eh. Stay. And nutmeg, that's, what? I already have the thing? Ah. Brown coriander. And nutmeg is right here. Okay, excellent. We've got the spices we're gonna use for our spice blend. So let's see. So this is how recipe testing tends to work in my house. It's a lot of um, a lot of cross-referencing things, a lot of research, a lot of cross-referencing, um, kind of slapping a ton of different recipes together until something works. Editing a little bit, I mean, only rarely is stuff completely formed in a vacuum. And that is cooking up nicely. So, right. So yeah, to make spice rub. Kind of learning how, uh, how to smoke using the Essential Real Guide to Barbecue. Uh, and I'm sort of, I'm following instructions on how to do kind of three, two, one spare ribs, but where it's tender and falls off the bone but where I'm also basting it with a sauce, kind of a uh, tomato-based sauce, kind of like a Kansas City barbecue. So, we're gonna be doing that. Um, so, third a cup of pig. Okay. And I promise I am essentially trying to cross-reference on it's a Memphis-style barbecue sauce. Hmm. Okay. Ah, here we are. Okay, it looks like I do want to put some sugar into there to also um, caramelize a bit, so. Hmm. Probably don't need that much sugar. Okay. I think I know where I'm going on this. So. Let's just 
just need to get my notebook out and we can start doing some blending. So, let's see here. I'm also going to cross reference that recipe for haggis that I found on Great British Chefs. So, it looks like my main um, flavor element for that is black pepper and um, actually coriander, definitely. Okay, so let's just start out using. Let's start out using. I have a tablespoon, actually. Let's make it easier and start out with a teaspoon. That's a half tablespoon. So I can convert things easily as we figure this out. So it looks like for haggis, it's about four parts um, ground coriander to two parts of black pepper, which the black pepper I've got over here. And for a standard barbecue rum, we're looking at also adding sugar and uh, whatever else you want to add to it. Um, probably want to add some garlic in there as well. So, let's just start out with that first. So, got my notepad. I'm just gonna write down the spices that I want to include, which include kosher salt. Let's see, yep, kosher salt. Just add that. Ground coriander. The way I'm doing it, I'm just marking down teaspoon is my main kind of element because I then add tallies as in how much I actually use to get the taste I want. So ground sage, ground black pepper, ground thyme, garlic powder. And see, do I have any cane sugar? I do not have much cane sugar left, so we're just gonna use standard sugar. Unless I've got some brown sugar. I think I'd prefer to use some brown sugar with this, especially because it gives it more of an old, old style taste. my brown sugar out of the pantry, please. I'm just gonna add brown sugar. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our starting flavor bases off. So get that four teaspoons of ground coriander. I already lost count. So, one, two, three, four. So, starting out with four. We'll start out with two on the black pepper. So, Together. So far, so good. What else did it say? Oh, and one part nutmeg. So let me go ahead and write that down. Ground nutmeg. Which is right here. Yep, 
it definitely has the hoggets flavor to it. But I do kind of want to draw out some of the sweetness, so we're going to use that ground thyme. Definitely some garlic, so I'm just gonna add one, two of garlic. So and let's go ahead and add the for tablespoon. So it's gonna start out with the equivalent of a tablespoon. Where's my scissors? Here we are. And I'm going to do the same with the kosher salt. So the equivalent of a tablespoon, that's three teaspoons. One, two, three. Okay, let's just see how that all... Make sure I mark that down. Three. One. And... I don't look sound kosher salt. I did. Okay, so that's three. So that's our starting base of our spice blend. Alright. Well, it smells fantastic. Like it. Let's see. Just have to taste again. Didn't need anything. Still has very much the haggis type flavor. Oh, hello, Food Two Blades. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for um, coming on my channel. Uh, my name's Catherine Barsanistas. I run the Gluttonous Geek. Um, it's a nerdy food blog, and this show is Munchies and Minis, where I first make a Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop themed snack, and then uh, work on painting a miniature. Um, today I'm not really doing as much mini painting because I'm holding a big uh, get together tomorrow on the fourth. Um, so what I'm also using the stream tonight is to do is to do a little bit of recipe testing because I'm going to be making some smoked uh, short pork short ribs tomorrow, inspired by Ebenezer McCoy from the Dresden Files. And right now I'm putting together a kind of Scottish um, sort of inspired barbecue spice rub. So I've got, uh, let's see, black pepper, ground coriander, um, thyme, garlic powder, nutmeg, ground sugar. It tastes great so far. I was going to add sage, but I think I might actually leave that out because I think it tastes great as it is. So it's good to know that um, what I came up with as far as the main flavors, that's good to start with. And I think I'm going to use that tomorrow. So now that I've got that spice blend together, I need to figure out a barbecue sauce. So, a Scottish take on a Kansas City barbecue sauce. We'll see what we can make. Um, 
And once again, I've got to do a little bit of cross-referencing here, so... Now, I've got my base, base figured out a little bit by just getting some organic ketchup since, um, well, honestly, one of my good friends is allergic. Look, I'm a food streamer as well and a geek. I've done cooking from the Fallout cookbook and more. I, plus, I paint miniatures for my Warhammer 40k I play. Well, that's super cool. Um, it's funny you mentioned the Fallout official cookbook because my good friend Victoria Rosenthal, um, i.e. Pixelated Vika here on Twitch as well as um, pixelatedvika.com, sorry, not um, pixelatedprovisions.com, uh, she wrote the official Fallout cookbook. Um, and I did a review of it on my website. So um, yeah, uh, she's an awesome person all around. Also super, uh, super jealous of her because she works as a graphic designer for frickin' NASA. Um, but uh, yeah, Victoria is awesome. We've done like Battle Chef Brigade inspired recipes together before and absolutely fine human being. Um, yeah, uh, see, I follow her, and in her Discord, we've spoken. Cool beans. Well, welcome to my stream, and I totally put, what, what is that? That's the black pepper onto the garlic powder. That's my brain for you. So, once again, I'm doing some, so Kansas City style, eh, barbecue sauce. Now let's see if it's anything close to what I'm trying to put together. Should I really trust Food Network? Let's see here. Watch them they like use tomato puree with Oh yep, they use crushed toma canned tomatoes. Okay. Well. Um hmm. Looks like I'm gonna have to use some crushed tomatoes instead of ketchup. I'll be right back, but I'll keep talking, because I have a mic that allows me to do that. I'm going to see real quick if my crushed tomatoes in my pantry have potassium metabisulfate in them, because that is the thing that my friend is allergic to. And, oh good, it is not. It does not have that. So, okay. So... Always keep some crushed tomatoes on hand, especially for sauces, soups, whatever. So I do teaching on Twitch as I am a chef, but I love to teach people how to cook and do the same. My YouTube channel where I started before I started streaming, that's super cool. Um, I am not a professional chef, I've just been running my blog for the past five years, but I started streaming uh, not too long ago, well, back in February, because uh, my friend Chelsea, i.e. Little Red Dot here on Twitch, um, she does role playing on Twitch and has a blast with it. I played on a Witch Girls game, and I realized um, video editing is a pain in the butt and takes up a lot of um, computer space. And I've already got my hands tied up with the blog as it is. So with streaming, I'm able to add a video element as well as really focus on the tabletop community without overcrowding my blog with nothing but tabletop stuff. So um, that this is my opportunity to do that. So I've got, let's see, red gold crushed canned tomatoes. One of the, um, this is actually, I think probably the best rated by, um, not ser maybe Serious Eats, I think, uh, as far as canned tomatoes are, are concerned. Um, I prefer used canned tomatoes rather than fresh because, well, in sauces and whatnot because it's packed at the peak of season. And it also tends to be the, the, the best of the crop. And also, like by, by the time you get stuff in the grocery store, it's the flavor's just gone. So, okay, so 14 ounce can of crushed tomato. Check. Oh, I can use the ketchup. Okay. So, organic ketchup. I was gonna use apple cider vinegar anyway. Huh, this thing is, let's see, please, please not have metabasulfate in it. It doesn't say that it does. Okay, I trust you. I trust your bottle of apple cider vinegar. I trust you. Um, molasses, no, we are using honey instead because that's more Scottish. And 
I am not using all of those various spices. In fact, I'm going to use, I'm going to make up more of that spice blend. So it's going to be hard for me as I just bought a cafe. So I'll be running that and doing my streaming and YouTube. It's going to be fun. I totally understand what you're going through, except I haven't really worked in food service. So, but I've got really good friends that do. Um, one of my friends, Teddy, he's the former uh, chef of Battle and Brew here in Atlanta. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how that man slept um, at the time. So I'm just going to make another round of the spice blend. Uh, but yeah, actually, two of my other friends, um, Brian Connor and Charlotte Guyton. Uh, Brian runs the nerdy food blog Level One Chef. Uh, he also was the cookbook, uh, the, the chef behind the mother, um, the unofficial Earthbound cookbook, which I believe the 30th anniversary of Earthbound is towards the end of this month. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do a review of that cookbook uh, before the end of this month. But yes, he's also on Twitch. But I'm getting back to the thing. Uh, they actually opened up a board game cafe up in uh, northern New York. Um, so, yeah. He is absolutely swamped with things. With all the things. Okay, so. Right, so that's the spice blend I'm working with. And good for me. Um, now for the sauce. Go with the 15 ounce can crushed tomato. Let's see, a cup of ketchup. I've got two minutes left on those Hasselback potatoes. So yeah, as I was saying, I do a D and D inspired food, and I've been doing this um, food fan. Uh, sorry. A fan art challenge, the 52 Weeks of D&D Challenge, and um, there is a different theme word per week. Last week the theme word was injury, so I made some cucumber noodles with prosciutto and blue cheese, and it was for uh, pasta of inflicts wounds. The whole idea is that it's pasta that also inflicts necrotic damage, so it had stuff like raisins, like withered stuff in there too. Um, this week, the challenge word was um, loot, which reminds me I need to put that away for one. Make my loot, so to speak. So, uh, for the past couple of um, episodes, but oh yeah, Hasselback potatoes are pulling. Um, whenever I had some kind of thing featuring gold pieces, what I would do is I would make honey cornflakes. So, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for this, so, do, 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 do. but that's okay because I need to wait for this to, ah. I'm going to bring it over briefly so you can see what I'm, uh, what they look like currently, um, but then I'm going to be making my honeyed cornflakes to put on top of it as my gold pieces, so to speak. Whoa, okay. Ooh. All right. Ah, eh. Kosher salt down. Okay. So yes, as you can see, those are nice and crispy. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my oven before someone get like probably me gets hurt. So yeah, hustle back for pulling. Um, that's the potato portion. I still need to make my honey corn flakes. Oh. Hey, I am looking for a D&D group near me to join as I always wanted to play. Well, that is super cool. Um, right now, the only tabletop game I've been playing, it's been, oh, well, I've been playing two games. One is called Witch Girl's Adventures, where it's kind of like a, uh, what's it? <sighs> kind of like Mean Girls uh, meets Harry Potter. Um... I've also been playing a Star Wars game recently with my friends and uh, my DM, my good, uh, my good friend Henry. He is actually used to work for White Wolf Publishing as a writer, so he's a pretty good DM. I've been enjoying working with him. Okay, so now I just need to make my cornflakes. 
So, right. I'm gonna need, obviously, saucepan. Next, I'm going to need cornflakes. I just need to measure that out. I'm gonna need about a cup and an eighth of a cup of cornflakes. My favorite tabletop game is Star Wars X-Wing as I'm a massive Star Wars nerd. Well, that's awesome. Um, I've been playing as a Zeltran scoundrel in our current game. Actually, four. If I get any painting done tonight, I'll probably continue to work on my friend's um, Cathar Jedi on miniature stuff. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so. Right, cornflakes. And so two tablespoons of butter. Do, 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 do. Which exactly how much I have left from this stick of butter, so that's convenient. Just get that in there. Wait a minute. There we go. And four tablespoons of honey. Watch Will Wheaton on YouTube with his tabletop games. Yeah, it's. I used to. I didn't really. I actually, when I started doing role playing, it was mostly on online, um, like AOL chat rooms and forums. Um, it wasn't until. Oh goodness, I think late high school that I started playing D and D with my friends. And, well, actually, no, it was college. It wasn't even D&D. It was this kind of urban fantasy game called Unknown Armies. It's like one part fa urban fantasy, one part, like, kind of Call of Cthulhu. And I totally played going, okay, I could try to be badass, or I could try just, you know, be ridiculous, because I am still figuring out and learning what I'm trying, uh, learning stuff, so... I went with Ridiculous, and my character was a former Renaissance Festival juggler who'd been hit in the head by one too many of her juggling balls, her juggling pens. And, uh, yeah, um, within the first five minutes, I'd done more damage than anyone else in the group. Um, so... I like to play ridiculous characters, if possible. Um, and what's kind of... I mean, I played a lot with friends about a couple of years ago, but it wasn't until I started listening to the Adventure Zone podcast and other D&D podcasts, uh, various other roleplay podcasts, that I got back into tabletop. Let's see, three... And... But yeah, the Witch Girls game has been, um, I've been playing on my friend Lynn's Red Dots channel. And my character, Loretta Maitre, was uh, raised in a kind of alternate, well, kind of a fantasy world, literally, where her, that her mother conjured up that mirrored all the 1950s and 60s sitcoms. <laughs> from the UK. D&D is not really big. That's why I do 40 k Oh, cool. Well, nice to meet, meet you. Um, believe it or not, I used to live in England. Um, my dad was in the army for about 23 years, so we spent, we were there from about, um, 89 to 92. Went to kindergarten out there. Oh, yeah. It's getting nice and foamy. So now once it's doing all that, getting all foamy and stuff, I need to turn the heat off. Pour in my cornflakes. If anything, I would say living in England probably the reason why I got obsessed with fantasy stuff to begin with is it's kind of hard not to when you're surrounded by castles. So, I'm just gonna get 
give that a stir and a pinch of kosher salt. But uh, no, I've um, especially gotten more into the D and D stuff from watching my friends' uh, web series. Um, if you're a big YouTube fan, I rec really recommend the series Journey Quest. It's kind of like from the point of view of the characters, but a D&D &D party where everything in the story just goes off the wall wrong. Okay, so now that I've got my loot, perch the camera down, and scoop on some honey corn flakes <laughs> onto my stovetop because I'm awesome like that. Kind of want to create sort of three little ridges. Kind of look cool. It's very hot. Okay. making sure that the camera is pointed at, you know, something I'm actually doing. So yeah, these honey cornflakes are supposed to kind of represent gold pieces, but that and they go nicely along with the cheddar cheese and bacon and fresh herbs that I've got here. so you can see what I'm doing. Excellent. Let's see. All right. So I'm gonna let that cool a little bit longer before I plate it, and then go back to my prep station. So I'm gonna put together some barbecue sauce. Yes, I will do the thing once I get my stuff written down. Cup of ketchup. brown sugar. Yeah, that would actually still work, so. Half a cup of cider vinegar. Half a cup of honey. Looks like I'm probably just going to need to put about, so that's two, 
three tablespoons. Four tablespoons of my spice mix. Okay. To start out with. All right, well, let's mix that together and see how it tastes so we can adjust as we go. So, just need to unload all that. Can opener. goodness it's almost nine wow that took a lot longer than I expected well let's just get this sauce mixed up and then we can call it a night so there is our fresh tomato need a measuring cup actually open my ketchup. Cider vinegar. Well, screw it. I don't want to do cider vinegar. I want to do whiskey. So. Hmm. Can't pour that back in. Ugh. Right, so I'm just gonna half a cup of scotch whiskey. that measuring cup first. A voice like his hands, wrinkled and often used, but still sharp with wisdom and concern. Okay. It was a question he posed to me. How do I know that you exist? He asked. Quarters a cup of brown sugar, so that would be I stood a dozen silent paces six eighths. But I think return to his bench. And I'm probably doing this completely wrong. After a moment of thought, I mm. spoke. No, nope, I'm you doing it all right. More than I know that you do. Let's see here. Six. OK. 
Okay. And four tablespoons of spice mix I just made up. So. So it says I need to put this in a saucepan and get it simmering for about 20 minutes. So should we go ahead and do that? In the meantime, I can finish out this episode by plating things. So. Is there any mustard listed at all? Is that a thing? Of course it is. Only a half a teaspoon of ground mustard. No, we're gonna add about an eighth of a cup of organic stone ground mustard. that into a saucepan and get it simmering. So just gonna close that real quick. Okay. Let's do non-stick so it doesn't Okay, so that means I can go ahead and plate myself a potato. So I got a plate here. Switch it down. That should be pick the prettiest one. Uh, I like how this one looks. This is interesting. Even though it's falling apart on me. It doesn't have to be perfect. back of holding. All right, well, it's definitely been a very busy episode, as you can tell. Uh, I'm glad you could join me for it. Um, if you want to join us again next week, God, what is that theme? Let me check that really quick. The theme of the week is somewhere on here. Gmail. From the front to the back, not a Gmail. Okay, Gmail. You will load my email and you will like it. So, the theme word next week is Mimic. So, we're going to be making some Mimic Meatloaf uh, tre um, treasure chests. So, it's going to look a lot like our loot, um, our loot uh, MacGuffin muffins, but it's going to be meatloaf and mashed potato and garlic. So, I hope you'll join me for that. It should be a fun episode uh, as I do all sorts of fun stuff with, 
you know, a muffin tin again. Um, and yeah, uh, happy fourth. I may or may not stream tomorrow doing um, my food preparations for that, but I, if, whether or not you join me, I hope you have a wonderful 4th uh, of July and rest of your weekend. Have a great night.